In the last chapter, we've gone through how to make a fridge monitor to monitor the humidity and temperature. This time, we're going to create a game console. This is the Aju Boy, a very successful and very nice game console that allows you to play 8-bit games written using the Aju Boy library. It is an open source program. You can buy the original Aju Boy from the online shopping site, or you can create your own hardware uh, using the ATmega32U4 chips or some other chips. So today we are going to try to create a game console using the ESP8266 or the Nook MCU D1 Mini. Uh, using the same breadboard that we used last time. See if we can create something. We can play some Arjubo again. This is a wiring diagram. So you need a few push buttons. The OLED I to C interface. OLED SSD1306 and the Nook MCU D1 Mini plus a buzzer. It could be a um, pixel electric buzzer. This wiring diagram and the source of the FreeSync file is stored in my GitHub. I'll show you the link in the description. So this is how it looks after you set up the breadboard. So this is the uh, I to C display. And then these are the push buttons. Let me show you. They are very small push buttons. So I bought these very tiny push buttons and then I need to solder in four pins, two at the top, two at the bottom. That will occupy uh, two holes across three holes vertically so I can just fit into this board nicely. So if you use the uh, conventional push buttons, they will occupy four, four vertical holes and three horizontal holes. And that will be uh, very hard to put in this tiny breadboard. It's actually two breadboards concatenated together. I put a magnet here so we can put it on the fridge when you don't need to use it or use it as a sensor like what I talked about in the previous chapter. This is a pixel electric buzzer. You can use something like this as well. Very tiny, very cheap. It's just a plate uh, or even this type. But it's hard to insulate. The whole thing is copper, so it will short circuit very easily. Or any conventional small speakers uh, that find in the PC and this is the Nook MCU port the USB port here okay after you have done with the proof of concept you may create something like this like me like what I did yeah this is the soft push button you see when you press it there's no sound and it's very good for game board because you don't want to annoy everyone right the other feature i put in is the headphone jack again not to annoy anyone and then the volume control because some of the sound is very loud from the games so it's good for volume control if you don't use the headphone you can tune down the volume so the beeper inside will not annoy anyone so my port, uh, I put in a shortcut here so I can plug in the display and replace it easily. Uh, there is a sensor here. It's a humidity sensor and temperature sensor XXT20. If I need, right, I can plug in this light sensor BH1750 through this hole here. So there's a pretty 
good uh, expansion ports you can use. So if you have other type of sensor, you can just plug it in. All right. So when you don't use it for a game machine, you can use it for an IoT device. Okay, and then if I have more time, I will challenge myself to make the most tiny Arduino in the world. So this is a tiny one. It's a, a tiny directional button switch. So you can push up, down, left, right, and even press to fire. They are very tiny contacts here, three of them and three of them. And then to secure it, you solder the, this case onto the board. So this soft buttons, very easy to handle their surface mount. You just find two holes and solder it. If you don't like the position, just desolder it and move it to another place, right? Unlike the conventional tactile switch, you have the legs going through the holes and then once you shoulder it, it's very hard to move them. It will break your circuit board when you move them. Okay, and on this side, what I plan to do is this ESP12E. It's the most tiny uh, circuit board. So compared to this one, it's just this, this thing inside. They show it separately as ESP12E. So you can make your device much smaller, uh, at least 30% smaller. And then I will add the battery like this. And then for connecting, connecting to the outside world for programming, right? I will add this jumper here. So I can connect to the outside world. And then I will add this tiny buzzer or sound. Probably I will have no space for the volume control anymore. Maybe here, there's still a tiny space for volume control. So I can put something in like this, the volume control. Like this here. Okay. And then we'll put a case at the back. So it's very, very tiny, very thin overall. So basically I created a GitHub um, a library for the ESP8266 version of Arduboy 2 library. Using this library and modifying the source code for many of the Arduboy program, you can make the Arduboy program run on this ESP8266 game console. Hi everyone, I've created the uh, ESP8266 game console that can run Boy games. So I'm trying to uh, show you a demo of all the games. So this is the uh, Siren games. You can uh, configure the speaker. After prototyping, I've also made this perfbot version. I have the volume control, the headphone jack, AB button, directional button, and then the space for sensor. This is the temperature sensor, and here I can plug in the lux meter, the light sensor. It's powered by the um, 3.7 volt lipo battery. That's inside here. This is Mystic Balloon. Let me show you. 
configuration sign on info help and play This is the Arjun Boy version of Space Invader called Pico Vader. I like this game a lot. Back to the old days when we played this Space Invader. And turn up the volume. When I port this game over, the most troublesome change is the sound. Because the ESP8266 runs faster than the ATmega32U4 that the original Arjun Boy is based on. So I need to uh, spend some time tuning the sound by adding delays. And just try to make it close to the original sound. But uh, still, it's not possible to make it uh, exactly the same. And also because um, the original audio tune library has the background music, but uh, the ESP8266, the Arjun Boy 2 library, ported over, so far hasn't got this library set up yet. So someone need to develop further using the timer, interrupt, and, and uh, allowed background music to be played. You notice that uh, my console, I use it for the traffic light as well. So when I press this, the lights will light up. It's like uh, adding fun to your game. This is another very nice game called Evade, and it originally has background music, but when I port it over, there's no support for the background music in the library, so I'll just take out all the background music. And again, I need to tune the sound a bit to make it as close to the original Arjun Boy version as possible. The ESP8266 is multiple times faster than the Arjun Boy ATmega32U4, so the game is, is okay. 
but the screen refresh may not be as quick as the original Arduino board because they're using the SPI interface. And that's multiple faster than this I2C interface, the four pin interface being used by uh, this version of Arduino board clone with the ESP8266. Okay, this is the last one I'm going to show you. Uh, Shadow Runner. Because the ESP8266 has a lot of memory. For this one, the Nook MCU Mini R1, I have 4 meg of memory. Um, and we can always replace the 4, board me uh, four meg memory on board with 60 meg memory. So my next challenge is try to see if I can build a game loader like that of Mr. Blinky's one for the original Arduino Boy cartridge, flash RAM. Um, that way we can store a lot of games on board in this uh, ESP8266 using the onboard SPI memory without uh, hooking up additional components. That's all I have. If you like my video, please subscribe and send to your friends to watch too. Thank you.